All right, so I'm going to work through the team test here. I know this week is a little weird with the state hockey and things like that. And so just want to provide you another opportunity to just make sure that you have a good understanding going into your test on Thursday. So your test on Thursday, this part will be the retake, which can help your try two grade. This is going to be the summative, but go on try three okay, versus try two. Okay, so work through it. Make sure you have a good understanding. I'm going to go fairly quickly through things. So pause, rewatch, skip over, um, do whatever you need to to be successful. So as we go here, this is the start of a retake part on equations. Okay, these graphs can look confusing. They can have weird equations. They can be simple. They can be anywhere in between. But when we are using the graph, we want to find this point of intersection which should be easy for us to find, and we want really only the x value. So as I look here, my x is equal to this 1.5. Simple as that. It is my point of intersection. And then substituting should be also very easy for us. We're just plugging that in. So here then I have the square root of 2 times 1.5 plus 3 is equal to negative 1.5 plus 4.5. And I'm just solving. So combining, I have 2 times 4.5. This just combines to be 3. 2 times 4.5 is 9. And 3 is equal to 3. Check. Okay. All we're doing there is just checking to make sure that our point of intersection, that 1.5, actually works in our equation. As we get into solving these equations, it can be a little bit more challenging, especially absolute value, some of these types of problems. We need to get absolute value by itself. So I'm going to add 6, leaves me this, equals 30, divide by 5. Absolute value x plus 1 is equal to 6. Now I have to remember absolute value, I can have two cases. I can have x plus 1 is equal to 6. I can have x plus 1 is equal to negative 6. Then I'm just solving all around. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 7. So remember with the absolute value, we should have two different answers. Similarly here with this next one, again, wherever I see this squared, I should think potentially factoring and think potentially two answers. So in order to factor, we have to get it by itself. So I'm going to subtract 13x, subtract 7, do that. I get 2x squared minus 13x minus 7 equals 0. I'm just getting it all on the same side. Now I am ready to factor. Here, a is not equal to 1. We're going to start seeing more and more of these. I'm taking a times c, which is negative 14x squared minus 13x, which is just my b term. A lot of you are doing a nice job up to this point, even finding your factors. So we have negative 14x, positive 1x. Multiply to be negative 14x squared, add to be negative 13x. The second step, though, is the one that a lot of you are still messing up on. I have my a term, 2x squared, plus a factor, so minus 14x, so plus factor, plus factor, 1x, plus c. Okay. Now I have to pull out the GCF again. So I can pull out a 2x, leaves me x minus 7. Here I can't pull anything out, so I'll pull out a 1, x minus 7. And my factors are 2x plus 1, x minus 7. Remember, this is all equal to 0. We're solving these, so we have to go the step further to be able to solve. So I have 2x plus 1 equal to 0. I have x minus 7 equal to 0 and solve. Subtract 1, add 7. Divide 2, and I get x equals negative 1 half, and, whoa, sorry about that, and x equals 7. Two answers, which are the two possibilities.
So that's going to be like the equations part of it. Some easier, some harder, but a nice kind of mix of everything. Now we move into the inequalities. Wherever I see these inequalities, I have to put them on a number line. Okay, I have to solve algebraically, and we've been doing that by finding our boundary points. So I have x minus 8 squared. I'm going to subtract 2. I'm going to say equals, because this will tell me my boundary points. Whenever I take the square root on both sides, I have x minus 8 equals 3. I have x minus 8 equals negative 3. Okay? So now when I solve, I have plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. I get x equals 11, and I have x equals 5. These, again, are the boundary points, okay? So when I put it on a number line, I have a point at 5, I have a point at 11. Since this is greater than or equal to, I know they are both closed circles, okay? And now I have to check some points, okay? I think it's easiest to check a point here in the middle. I'm going to pick 8. Because I know that's going to cancel some things out, but you can pick really any point. So if I plug in 8, check, I have 8 minus 8 squared plus 2. I want to know if this is greater than or equal to 11. So I have 0 squared plus 2 greater than or equal to 11, or 2 is greater than or equal to 11. This is false. So I know I am not shading that way. I'm going to shade the opposite ways. And then lastly, I have to write this as an inequality. So as an inequality, I have x is less than or equal to 5. And uh, really it's or, but that doesn't matter too much. x is greater than or equal to 11. And that's kind of my final answer through here. Okay. This also works as we look at graphs. This is the same graph as it was in number one. Same as number one. I don't actually really have to solve anything. I'm using the graph. I still want this point of intersection. Here I only have one, so it's pretty easy to find. Okay, I have a point at 1.5. Now here I have an open circle. Pick a point. You could actually use the same point. We could do 8. We could do 0. We can do really anything. Well, let's try 0. Okay? I have the square root of 2, 0 plus 3. I want to know if that is greater than. I am checking 0. Negative 0 plus 4.5. So I have square root of 2 times 3 greater than... 4.5, or the square root of 6 greater than 4.5. When I calculate this, I'm not going to do it here, but I get like 2.45 greater than 4.5. That is false, so I'm not shading that one. I'm shading the other way, or my arrow goes the other way. So I have x is greater than 1.5. And then when I look to shade here, to conclude the inequality part, this one's a little bit weird as my equations or graphs are just a little weird, but pick a point not on there. Zero, zero, okay? So if I check at zero, zero, I have zero greater than or equal to square root of two times zero plus three. Does this look familiar? Oh, wait, we actually did this in the problem above. I have zero greater than or equal to the square root of 6, or 0 greater than or equal to 2.45. This is false, okay? Which means I am not shading the 0, 0 side. So that means I'm shading everything kind of up this way, not towards 0, 0. I'm going to do the same for the next one. I have 0, greater than or equal to negative 0 plus 4.5, or 0 greater than or equal to 4.5. This is also false, which means I am not shading towards 
zero, zero, which means I am shading all this up here. Now the part that I want is the part where it's shaded both ways. So this is the answer that I am looking for. So that is what your retake portion of your test is going to be. The next is going to be the summative part. So here we keep going, okay? Inverses logarithms. So with our inverses, tables are easy. Just switch. So now this is negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2. This is 1 fourth, 1 half, 2, 4. Graph these points. Negative 2, 1 fourth. Negative 1, 1 half. 1, 2, 2, 4. And I am going to have a graph that looks like this. Should be pretty easy. Just graph the points after you do your number line. How do inverses use to solve equations? Inverses allow us to undo operations. So we've looked at all kinds of these, right? So if I go like original to inverse, okay? If I look at like adding, the inverse is subtracting. If I look at subtracting the inverse is adding multiplying dividing dividing multiplying square roots or square thing. square roots okay and that list continues okay that's just kind of a generic start um, to being able to do these. Then when we write our inverses, you can do these a couple different ways, especially these first ones. I saw a lot of mistakes with letter A here, okay? If you want, write H of X, okay? It says first we subtract seven, that's X minus seven. Then we square the result. That would be my original, okay? Or we can think we need to do opposite backwards. So as I read this backwards, instead of taking the square, I'm going to take the square root. Okay? Instead of, sorry, things are flying all over the place here for me. Instead of subtracting 7, I'm going to add 7. So then my inverse function, which is at negative 1, I'm taking the square root of x, adding 7. Okay? As simple as that. This next one, when they give us the equation, we're just going to switch and solve. So I have x equals square root y plus 3 over 5. Now I'm just solving this for y. So to do that, I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. Undoes my fraction. I get 5x equals square root y plus 3. Undo the square root. Inverse. Square both sides. Careful. Put parentheses around that. So we have parentheses 5x squared, y plus 3, and lastly subtract 3. And I get 5x, all of that squared, minus 3 is equal to y. And that is the inverse of those. So that's our inverses. As we look then at our logs, okay, we have y equals log base 3 of x. It might be helpful to write this in exponential form, which we should be able to do as well. This is 3 to the y is equal to x. And we're working on filling out this table. Okay, So 3 to the what would get me 1 over 27. That's going to be negative 3. 3 um, to the what gets me negative 2. No, 3 to the negative 2 gets me what? That would be 1 9. And I'm just going to kind of keep working through this table here. And you can pull this up on your calculator and calculate some of these as well. Careful with maybe these two, the fourth root and cubed root. Okay? Cubed root is just 0 0.5, but you can actually plug those in your calculators. It's going to be 1. 9, this one's a little bit weird too because it doesn't come out perfectly. So we'll say about 2.26 and the rest of them come out pretty decent. 
okay? Now, when I graph this, if you have a graphing calculator, it goes pretty smoothly, okay? Or actually, you can use your table. So I know I have a point at 1, 0. I have a point. Um, is this one here. I'll do them different colors. 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. I have a point at 9, 2. Okay? Notice as we use some of these other ones, like 1, 9, negative 2. Because so I'm going to get really close, but not cross the uh, this axis here, the y axis. Okay? Then we're looking at transformations. What does this mean? How am I transforming this? Well, I know this shifts right four. So I can just take each of these points and go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's off the graph. My axis, one, two, three. I know I'm not going to cross here. So here is what my graph would look like. Okay? Uh, I don't think it would actually go through that point. Uh, level off about there. Okay? And then our last problem here. Looking at Appendix B. Boy, it's been a long time since we've done that. Okay? Let's work on just being able to solve some of these log functions. Okay? We're using that power property. So I'm going to take the log 10 to the x is equal to log 150. Okay? Or this is the same as x log 10. That's that power property log 150 divide by log 10 divide by log 10 and you get i'm not going to show the calculation on my calculator but you should get about 2.17 now we're ready to write a uh, equation based off jamal's situation here okay remember here we are trying to write this as a times b to the x okay where a is initial, B is my rate. Careful, we have a 9% increase, which means this is 1.09. So my equation is Y equals 2300 times 1.09 to the X. Remember, increase means we're going up. You're just taking 9% plus 1. So 0 0.09, 1 plus that. Now, lastly, when I solve this in letter C, I'm plugging in 30,000 for Y. So I have 300,000 equal to 2,300 times 1.09 to the X. And this one I will try to show on the calculator, which I don't have up. All right, so I'll try to pull this up as well here with the calculator, okay? So how we solve this? We got to get our exponent by itself. So we're taking 300,000 divided by 23, 230,000. So I'm just dividing this. And we get 1.304 is equal to 1.09 to the x. And we're doing the same idea. Log 1.304 is equal to, I'm going to shortcut this, log 1.09 divide. So I'm taking log of that answer. Dividing it by log of 1.09, and I get my x at about 3.08. So it will take a little over three years for his house to be worth $300,000. So hopefully you felt pretty comfortable with this. Again, rewatch if you need to, ask questions if you need to, and we have to have these tests done by Thursday.